Okay, First Chronicles 22. We've got to break it up in different parts. Because this is something, a chapter we just don't go reading through. And we're talking about a piece of land that is has history in the Bible. It's present with David right now. It's going to be present with Solomon. It's going to be yet present today and future. This piece of land will put forth the Holy of Holies, the temple. It's a place where Abraham brought Isaac to sacrifice him under God. It's a title deed recorded in the Bible. In 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles. It's important. It's mentioned twice. It's a place where Solomon is going to build a temple. Solomon's temple. That will last until Babylon comes and destroys it because of the sins of Judah. It's going to be the temple is mentioned in Jeremiah. Ezekiel tells us that in the future there's a, a, a temple in the millennium. We read about Ezra and Nehemiah coming back to the spot where we're reading right now to rebuild that temple of Solomon that was destroyed by Babylon. We have a place where Herod builds the temple and he, he, he takes care of the Jews by building the temple on the spot we're reading right now and we can find the footprints of Jesus where David is or was in this First Chronicles 21 and 22. And we don't know but we know there's going to be temple worship in the tribulation. We don't know if it's church age. We're going to see that temple start building, be in the building, or even finish. But in the tribulation period, on this spot we're reading right now, will be a temple. And where we just read where David put that altar. The Bible says in the tribulation period, at the three and a half years into the tribulation period, just before the great tribulation period, they're going to open up those doors, they're going to open up that veil, and the Antichrist, Satan, is going to be sitting on that mercy say, hello folks. Now we will celebrate the Mass with Jewish blood. And I don't mean hocus pocus, I mean let's kill Jews and let's drink their blood. And then Jesus Christ in the Millennium, Ezekiel gives us all the great detail of what I can't even explain about this temple. That Jesus Christ will be there. David will be there with Jesus Christ. The least, the Levites will be set back up. The priests will be set back up. And as church members, as the bride of Christ, we will be there with Jesus to look at this temple. We will be here. Holy ground, for, uh, the holy, the holy city. Forget about it. I wait to be the holy city under Jesus Christ. David has purchased it. Now, when we look at verse six, we're going to look at David instructs Solomon. Then he called for Solomon, his son, and charged him to build an house for the Lord God of Israel. It's a charge. And we're going to look at David's idea, but David can't do it. So David's going to explain to Solomon why he can't do it. Verses 7 and on is a father to his son. That's what the book of Proverbs is about. Is Solomon is a father to his son. You'll find the expression, my son many times in the book of Proverbs. And David said to Solomon, my son, there it is. You find that in Proverbs. As for me, it was in my heart to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. And we're going to look at this again. We're going to read, read, keep reading. Because this is important. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, thou hast shed blood abundantly. Now, this is not the blood of Uriah. This is the blood of this is the blood of Goliath. This is the blood of the Philistines. This is the blood of, of military tactics. This is the blood of war defending Israel. It's not a murder charge, as Jehovah Witness will put it, but David has shed blood. God, in through the Bible, if you go back and get our studies, murder is not a charge for men in the military. But here, for the temple building, God told David, I, I can't have that blood, build it. And has made great wars. No, not just wars, great wars. We talk about the Great War, World War I, World War II. Uh, history states in the Bible that were great wars before those two wars. So, all right, when you say the Great War, World War I, World War II, you're already not teaching history because if you open up your Bible, you see there were great wars during David's time. 
God don't care about Germany. God don't care about America. God don't care about England. The only focus he had during World War I, World War II, is his people were being persecuted. His people were being killed. The wars that God cares about is his nation. The wars that he fights. God used David as, as God fought those wars against the enemies of Israel. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. And the same verse, chapter 8, the war. It's not murder. It's battle. Behold, a son shall be born to thee. Now, is that not familiar in the book of Isaiah? For unto you, uh, I believe, a son is given. Here is born. I forget how Isaiah, I forget how Isaiah, I should have looked it up. Isaiah says, behold, it says, it's, it says the birth of Jesus Christ as the man and the son of God is given. Here it is. A child shall be, a son and a, the son and the child in Isaiah. Well, Solomon then becomes a type of Christ. Solomon will also become a type of Christian. To thee who shall be a man of rest, peace. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. Now Solomon's name means peace. But Solomon had a name of beloved. Look at 2 Samuel 12, 25. Solomon had another name. 2 Samuel 12. Verse 25, I think that's a 5. Not terrible handwriting. Yep, 25. 2 Samuel 12, 25. This is all past, this is all present, and this is all yet future. Bible's not dead. He sent by the hand of Nathan, that's one of David's prophets, the prophet, and he called his name, this is Solomon, the birth of Solomon, Jediah, Jediah, which means beloved of the beloved of the Lord. So beloved of the Lord and peace are the names of Solomon. So Solomon was is one of them ba babies that were foretold to the parents, like Isaac, like uh, Samson, like Jesus. You're gonna have a child. And then he's pre-named. Isaac was pre-named. I'm not sure. No, I don't think Satan, uh, Samuel was, was pre-named. Jesus was pre-named. John the Baptist was pre-named. So we are in the realm of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to think with Ishmael. I know she. I know the angel told her he's going to be a child of, of, of armor and war and battle. But I'm not sure if Ishmael was named. So there shall call, his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. So that temple building, at the time that the temple was built, according to the scriptures, was a peaceful time in the land. And what we read when Rehoboam comes in, to, and Solomon has died, Rehoboam comes into, into play, and there's been... There's been conflicts because Solomon has sinned against God by multiple gods. But now there's peace. Quietness in Israel in his days. That's not many times in Israel. He shall build a house for my name. He shall be my son. I am a son of God. I have been adopted through Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit, by my faith on what Jesus Christ has done. God the Father told David, as far as Solomon, that's I'll adopt that child. No one else in the Old Testament has that. There's one only one other person in the Old Testament, you gotta read the New Testament, that says that they were a son of God, and that was Adam. God told David, as far as that son you're going to have, he is my son. God told any Christian, any person that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be able to call God Abba Father. You will have that spirit of adoption. You're mine. And I will be his father. That's the Christian relationship with God the Father today. 
I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. That's David's throne. That throne that God promised to David promised unto Solomon is a throne that Jesus Christ is going to sit for a thousand years in Jerusalem, in the millennium, where there is no longer a curse. And the only thing that is cursed is that serpent. He's still going to eat the dust. Everything else, the curse has been removed. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom for his kingdom over Israel forever. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee and prosper thou and build the house of the Lord thy God as he has said to thee. And Ephesians 6.10, go, go in your power, go in your might. Ephesians 6.10. Now we're looking at here, here's David giving the charge to Solomon saying, hey, I want you to go build this temple. Now we need to go back to chapter 17, verse 1. And we're going to reread again. Reread. This very spot, this important spot, God's spot, that the United Nations fight against God. The Arabians fight against God. Presidents have fight against God. England has fought against God. Germany has fought against God. The Catholic Church has fought against God. And yet in the very scriptures of the Bible, and when we look at the Israelites, when we look at the children of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, we will look at, if you curse them, God will curse you. If you bless them, God will bless you. And that blessing goes upon this, this land. In chapter 17, verse 1, Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in the house of cedar. Look how great my house is. But the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. So we recognize that. And we recognize the great covenant of, of God given to, to David. And we want to see where's piece of song. Oh, where's if I hit here? He speaks to Solomon. Hey, buys. All right, David prepared. Oh. Oh, we're in First Chronicles. Okay, we just read the, um, yeah, First Chronicles 22 is where he speaks. That's what we're studying right now. Second Samuel chapter seven. Second Samuel chapter seven is the other place that we read. And we read about this area. We read about Verse 1, And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, the Lord had given rest round about from all his enemies. Now, this rest does not last. There's a battle coming up. We'll have the story of Bathsheba and Uriah coming up. So this rest does not continue into Solomon. But when Solomon is set up, as, as soon as Solomon's kingdom is set up, his throne is established, then the peace begins. David's going to have unrest. He's going to have Amon uh, rape one of his, his granddaughters. He's going to have, uh, I can't think of his name now, uh, one of his sons try to usurp the, the authority. So this is a temporary rest here. Absalom. That the king said to Nathan, the prophet, see now I dwell in the house of cedar, what we chronicles, but the ark of God dwells within curtain. Very soon is going to dwell within cedar, gold, lavish, on the spot that David bought, at the spot where Solomon built. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Now we don't read about the blood here. That's added in Chronicles. Evidently, Nathan and David, or God and David, has a little talk. That's not recorded in 2 Samuel. David may one time say, Lord God, well, why can't I? Then the blood. Because watch what Nathan tells him. Go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time 
I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. David said, like, that's not good enough. In all the places where I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, why build ye not, why build ye not me in a house of cedar? God never said do it. David's heart love for the Lord said, this is not right. Now therefore, shalt thou say unto my servant, my servant David, you shall say to him, as I mark my Bible, Thus saith the Lord host, I took thee from a sheep coat, from following the sheep, type of Jesus Christ, to be a ruler over my people, over Israel. I was with thee whither so thou wentest, and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight, there are going to be a lot more, <laughs> and have made thee a great name, like Jesus Christ, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth, like Jesus Christ. More I will appoint a place for my people Israel. You see, we haven't purchased that land yet. God has told David, there's going to be a place that I'm going to set my name. And he's told that throughout the law. There's a place where I will set my name. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, a place for my people Israel and will plant them. So they can boot roots. And they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. That's future. The Jews are not in their land today, today, present, 2019. There are some Jews there, but not all. Not all. So this is future. And no more move, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore. They're launching missiles right now from Gaza up and over into Israel. And the only time people get upset is when Israel launches missiles back in retaliation. Then that's the great sin. So this is even future more. This is prophecy. And since the time that I command judges to be over my people Israel, the book of Judges, and I cause thee to rest from all thy enemies, also the Lord tells thee that he will make thee a house. And when thy days fulfilled, here we go, what we're talking about today, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, going to die, I will set up thy seed, well, that seed runs to Jesus Christ, Matthew 1, Luke chapter 2 or 3. Both the adopted father Joseph and Mary, which shall proceed out of thy bowels inside David, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house of my name, Chronicles says it's Solomon, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now watch this. Now here's our subject. I will be his father. That's what God says about me under Christ, through Christ. When I pray father in my prayers, I am literally praying, praying to my father. Uh, it's not Satan, John 8, 44. It's Father God. That title is taken by Roman Catholic priests. How dare they? And he shall be my son. That's me in Christ. So realize Jesus Christ is going to be king of kings and lord of lords forever. Though he's not. He is not sitting as king today. Was there a period of time when David was king and didn't sit as king? Yes. While Saul ran around. Remember Saul? He had devils running into witches and running all kinds of things. And, and Saul dies in battle. How does, well, I know Satan doesn't die, but how does Satan end up? He has this great big battle at the end of the millennium. Poof, he's going to the lake of fire. Where is Saul? Saul is in hell today. What about David and Solomon? They last forever. Under the fatherhood of God, Jehovah, for the Old Testament, what about me? Hey, I've got the kingdom, and i got the king who is my husband, because I am the bride of Jesus Christ. And that kingdom of my husband lasts forever, so I will last forever in that one kingdom forever. 
So the promise given to Solomon and David is the same promise given to me because I got royal blood in me through Jesus Christ. And the Bible speaks about in the Pauline epistles, we are the children of God. So is Sol Solomon. And look what he says. If he commit iniquity, will Solomon commit iniquity? Oh, yeah. He goes in Egypt after horses. He goes into Egypt for gold. He, he exercises all kinds of gold, and he multiplies wives, which the law said not to. And as far as we know, we don't know if he read a copy of the law for himself, but that was in the law. And these wives drive him off to other religions, other gods. And there's one thing that Solomon did not say that I can quote from another man in the Bible. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Solomon did not get that. So because of all that, the Solomon die on the Old Testament law, and there's no cows, there's no goats, there's no nothing. The Solomon can do to give to God, so he dies and goes to hell. Absolutely not. Why? I will chasten him with the rod of men. You know what God does to me if I sin? Go to hell. No, he doesn't say that. He says, I will chase you, Hebrews chapter 11 or 12. As a father corrected his son, so will the father correct us that we may do well, that we will be considered as bastards. Hebrews says. You know, one of the ways that God, there's two ways that God punished Solomon. One man's name I can't remember. The other one was uh, Jeroboam. Jeroboam will be given the kingdom away from his son Rehoboam. God sent two men into Solomon's life, and he sent other controversies in Solomon's life to try to get Solomon right. He did it, but Solomon did not lose his soul. I don't lose my soul. I don't lose my childhood or my fatherhood with God. And I found that in the Old Testament scriptures. I will chastise, uh, chasten. That's the first time chasten shows up. Kind of interesting. First time that word shows up in Psalm, and you do wrong, and we know he does. With a rod of men. <laughs> you know what God, you know what Solomon speaks about rod in the book of Proverbs? <laughs> Evidently, Solomon never got that point, did he? <laughs> but look at Proverbs, a rod of correction. If you'll love your son, you'll 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 uh, give him the rod B times, anytime and all the time. And with the stripes of the children of men. That's kind of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 on that one. With the stripes and the rod. Do you know somebody else who got stripes because of sin that wasn't a sinner? Isaiah 53. With his stripes we are healed. Now Solomon becomes a type of Jesus Christ. There's a period of time that Solomon, I mean, he's got peace. He's got, but types do not go all the way. Jesus Christ, sinless perfection, got stripes because of my sins. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Example, as I took it from Saul. Saul went to hell. Saul is not going to hell. A person who is not a child of God today, if he sins and does wickedly, does not get right with God through the gospel of Jesus Christ, will die and go to hell, Saul. A child that is saved and sins, God will chastise him. But look at here, the mercy shall not depart away. You're going to heaven. You may lose rewards, you may lose an inheritance. I mean, I'm going to throw this out there, and you don't have to believe it, but I believe some Christians are not going to come back in the millennium for the inheritance. I'm not saying they lost it. It looks like that millennial inheritance is an inheritance earned. I don't know where they go. But he says some of those who do it, you get one city, you get two cities, you get three. Maybe they come to the millennium, and they're under other Christians. Be quite weird to have a lonely Christian serve the Lord and do right, end up having a pastor of his church who's lazy and doesn't do nothing, be under that person that sat in the pew. I don't know. 
You think that Christian was so mean, so rotten? You know, he wasn't loving. He wasn't care. I give that guy, I give that guy a city, and you can sit under that guy for a thousand years. And he can explain to you what he done for me. You can explain to him why you didn't do nothing for me. I don't know. And thy house, David's house, and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. The eternal, external, all life focuses upon the king of David. The throne of David. The family of David. And that, according to Luke chapter 1, is that baby that will be born of Mary, who is God manifested in the flesh, that, that throne of David be given to him, that throne is forever. Pilate said, King of King and Lord of Lords, the Bible says in Revelation 19, that throne goes on forever. That father is me. I am the bride. As that throne of Christ goes forever, this brings this to us. So do we. How do you like that? We see the church age here in the scriptures about a piece of land, about a building that hasn't even been built yet. And I say, I call, when you got churches calling themselves temples, I call it a sin. Because the Bible speaks in the New Testament, the temple is our body. And those churches will not go outside and meet with the Lord out in the field with no walls or, or chandeliers or anything else like that. That'd be, Lord forbid. So here we see Solomon a type of Christian. If he were to be sin, he'd be chastised. But he's got eternal salvation, unlike Saul. So, a father to a son, and we learn a little more information in Chronicles. David says, the reason why I can't build, because I've been a man of war. Goliath started it. And he went into battles, and he fought for Israel. And that love and desire that he had in his heart, he can't do. But we've learned in the previous chapter, he's going to stockpile. He's going to get everything he can. He's going to set it all up. Yeah, I imagine Solomon walking around as a child growing up saying, yeah, yeah, all this stuff my dad's got, I'm going to build that temple one day. And just watching the piles get bigger and bigger and bigger. Glory to God. 